Um, so in my case, when I'm doing the natural log of each, then I end up with the natural log of x squared ln x. Right, and so if I solved um, the limit um, for the right side of the equation to be zero. So you got this. Okay. So you got that this is going to zero. So um, then you have to solve for y. But wouldn't you have limit on both sides? Uh, yeah, I'm skipping steps here, so I should have said. I just, know, I, just, I just don't know how you would write it. Yeah. Which is equal to the limit of x squared. Yeah, so we figured out that this limit was zero, right. and because the natural log is a continuous function, we can move the limit inside the natural log. Anytime you have a continuous function, you can move the limit inside of the function. Okay. Uh, so, um, and now we want to um, get this by itself, because this is what the question was asking us for, and we do that by raising both powers, both sides to the e. So we can raise both sides to the, um, exponentiate both sides. Well, E cancels out the natural log. And you're left on the left-hand side with what the question was asking you for in the first place. And on the right-hand side, you have one. Let me end up with the same answer. Uh, I think the way I did it the first time is the way they usually do it in the examples in the book. But uh, actually, this method might be a little less confusing, because you don't need to raise things to the E until the last step. Uh, either way, it's a little bit subtle. And you wouldn't even have to raise it at the end, right? Because if you take the definition of natural log, it would just be e to the zero is equal to limit y x going to the zero. I like that. What? I like that. So yeah, you're right. We could just reinterpret this. We know what this really means. This really means that e to the zero equals this limit. You're right, because when you say log of a equals b, That's the equivalent thing to saying this. That's actually a, that's a better way of doing it. That's right. We know that this means this. That's the definition of the natural log. The natural log is the number that you can um, raise e to that power and get the number you're taking the log of. So yeah, this step, we can just um, say e to the 0 if equals this. And then uh, that's the way to make the algebra the simplest. So I like that, yeah. Does that make sense or not? Yeah. Um, I, well, still, can we go back to the, what you were doing? Sure. This one over here? Well, I don't know. Yeah. Well, okay. why don't you take out zero down there? What yeah. do you do with it? All right. So um, here, was the, uh, so here was the main body of our work. And I had gotten to this step. I had gotten to this step. And then I saw that in order to make any further progress, I had to find this limit, the limit of x squared times the natural log of x. So I broke that off as a subproblem. I took this little piece over here, and I tried to figure that out separately, figure out what the limit as x approaches 0 of natural log of x times x squared is. Well, in order to use L'Hopital's rule, I had to write that like a quotient. So I rewrote that like a quotient. Um, and now that it's a quotient, um, well, I should have checked here that now this is going to be, um, as this goes to 0, this is going to negative infinity. And this is also going and this is going to uh, positive infinity. Does it matter that it's positive or negative or no? No. Okay. All that matters is there's an infinity on the top and the bottom, okay. which means it's an indeterminate form, and that's when you're allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. That's right. So the signs here don't make much difference. What matters is there's an infinity on the top and the bottom, so we're, um, L'Hopital's rule applies Wait, in this where, case. For L'Hopital, there's infinity over infinity, zero over zero, and then that's it? Now, strictly speaking, yeah, L'Hopital's rule only applies to quotients. So you can't use L'Hopital's rule until you have a quotient. However, 
There are some other indeterminate forms that are difficult to find the limits. For example, the one we had here was 0 to the 0 with power. This is another case where you can't just plug in the number that you're taking the limit at. However, you can't apply Loewe Tau's rule to this directly because it's not a quotient. So instead, you have to do what we did here, which is first rearrange this until it forms a quotient. And then, if you started with this indeterminate form, you're going to end up with this indeterminate form, probably. And then you can use Loewe Tau's rule. What if, I think, you had like zero, what if you had like 1 over 0? Would that be infinity? Yeah, that's not indeterminate. That just means that you're going to infinity. Okay. That's right. If the top is going to the number 1 and the bottom is going to 0, then you know that you're going to infinity. You might have to figure out whether you're, uh, whether you're going to positive infinity or negative infinity. But that's not an indeterminate form. This is a limit you can figure out without Loewe Tell's rule just by plugging in the number that you're okay. evaluating the limit at. Okay, so that would be... Okay. Um, so does it make sense how I got to this point? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, because we have, uh, this is now an indeterminate form, uh, we should take the derivatives of the top and the bottom. Well, the derivative of natural log is this, and the derivative of the bottom is this. Okay? Uh, and then I just did some simplifications. I took the constant out of the limit, uh, and this is x to the negative 1 divided by x to the negative 3. So you subtract the exponents. Negative 1 minus negative 3 is 2. If people go too fast here, they're likely to get messed up with the signs, but this should be a 2. Um, and now I don't have an indeterminate form anymore. I just have the number, uh, if I plug in x equals 0 now, I just get 0. Um, so now, because this is a continuous function, I can just plug in um, the number that, the, uh, that x is approaching to find what the limit is going to be. Okay. So that tells me that this whole complicated thing was 0, and then I went back and substituted that back into my main work where I had left off. Okay. But actually, uh, I, I'm thinking that uh, this approach with the y and then doing this transformation is actually less confusing, because this way you don't have to introduce the e until the very last step, so that there's less work there. This is the way I think they do it in the book, but this is actually less confusing to me. Can you tell me when you should raise anything to the e? Like, I don't know ever when to do that. Well, raising, things to the, um, raising e to a power is the inverse of taking the natural log. e to the x is the inverse of the natural log of x. So if you need to get rid of a natural log, you can do that by making it the power of e. It's like, when should you take a square root when you're trying to get rid of a square? Or when should you do a subtraction when you're trying to do uh, when you're trying to get rid of an addition? So when do you take and when do you um, do an exponential uh, use the exponential function when you're trying to get rid of the natural log? Uh, although in this case it, it was even more straightforward. It was just that um, we need to isolate the this term here. We need to isolate isolate this limit because this is what the question was asking us for. And like you remembered, um, if you just remember the definition of natural log. Anytime you have a natural log, you can rewrite that in terms of e. Any statement about natural logs can be rewritten in terms of e. So this is the key relation between them. If you have this equa an equation like this in terms of natural logs, you can just rewrite it in terms of e like this. And that was the trick that we used to go from here to here. OK. The other indeterminate form is this one. I don't know if this one would come up in your class, but this is also an indeterminate form. Uh, I don't know whether it can be solved the same way, though, so I don't know whether they'd ask you that. <laughs>